First off, I want to thank the uh, brave men and women who work behind the wall. I want to thank them on a national level because their job goes on How do they try to turn a guard? Well, President, uh, correctional officer, sorry, I apologize, uh, but correctional officer. Uh... How are you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji. Welcome to another episode of Tear Talk. Guys, we have a great topic coming your way. It's about being a correctional officer is about being a team player. I think we have a lot of people that may be in this profession that still have that me, that I. And this episode, we want to talk about the importance of being part of that we, part of that team. And guess who we have with us today? The founder of Keepers of Chaos, Russ Hamilton. What's up, Russ? Hey, Anthony. Uh, out here, just ready to delve into this subject, uh, try and put some things out there, maybe give some people some ideas. You know, maybe uh, give them a way to, you know, talk to some people to try and strengthen those teamwork bonds. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be a good dialogue. A uh, couple of things I want to let you guys know of real quick. Uh, me, Connie, Russ, Soto, and Gary York have also put together a panel. It's us five. We're available to agencies if interested. Uh, you'll see that there'll be a flyer when we cut to commercial on this one. Also, um, we have an event in Nebraska coming up. We actually may be out in Nebraska. We're still finalizing that. And then we also have that virtual panel discussion for the IA, uh, the International Correctional Training Professionals, IACTP, which is happening sometime in October. So we're starting to get back into the groove of things. I guess COVID hopefully is starting to clear up, hopefully, so we can start moving forward and really uh, travel a little bit more to meet everybody. Hey, Russ, how's Keepers of Chaos going? Uh, Keepers of Chaos is doing just fine. You know, we keep growing our membership. Um, you know, and it's a community on Facebook, uh, spelled with a K, Keepers of Chaos, um, you know, that's just all about the profession and the professionality of the profession more than anything. Uh, we're getting ready to, to, in August, August the 7th in Teon Ranch, California, we're going to do a Team Tough Mudder. Um, I've got one person so far that signed up, it's going to meet us there, and uh, anyway, uh, we're just hoping that as many people as possible. So if you're a corrections professional, if you want to do a Tough Mudder, start training now. It's uh, never too early to start training, especially since it's going to be 10 miles. It's going to be 20 something obstacles and it's going to be some good fellowship. And it's just going to be, you know, a chance to, you know, throw the profession out there. Hopefully we're going to have some t-shirts. Um, depends on, you know, what I can throw together as far as maybe some sponsorships, things like that. And Russ, if somebody wanted more information on that, how could they, uh, Get it? Could they email you? Uh, yeah, they can email me um, at uh, Sierra dot Sergeant, common spelling of Sergeant, S E R G E A N T at gmail dot com. And uh, if you don't get a response back right away. I get a lot of uh, I get a lot of you know basically spam emails. So you could go through the thing, but just let me know or come on over if you're a corrections professional. You're eligible to sign up on uh, Keepers of Chaos. Come down there. And then just once you're in the forum there on Facebook, uh, let me know and uh, I'll send you the links so you can buy your tickets. And then hopefully here in a few weeks, we'll start uh, posting up where you can go buy the T-shirt. We're going to call ourselves the Mud Guards, although, you know, I'm a big proponent of the profession and I like the officer title. I thought it'd be a little something fun, a little, uh, little take on the whole Tough Mudder thing there. I, and, and guys, again, if interested, you also... Uh, if you comment here that you're interested, Russ will uh, also give you another way to directly contact him as well. Because, Russ, you do frequent our comments on YouTube a lot, too. So just in case, yeah. you know, just in case that email gets confusing. Uh, now, guys, if you happen to show Tear Talk to your brave men and women at work in correction, so please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. Bell is going to notify you every time I post the video. We're going to go to our sponsor. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the importance of teamwork when becoming a correctional officer. Stand by. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University. Learn from the leader.
All right, and we're back. Hey, Russ, for me, teamwork began for me right in the academy. Um, I believe that the academy is this environment that the instructors set up so we kind of have animosity towards them because, you know, they're, they could be very aggressive towards us, but it builds us together. It makes us united. So I think right off the bat, um, what the instructors want to see in the academy is they want to see us, they want to see us working together. They want to see us connected. And, and yes, they, they do want to see us improve. Don't get me wrong. But you also have to realize, guys, is that when we're in this, we are in this together we're only as strong as our weakest link. So you, I, I remember when I was in the academy, we, could, we had this one person that was just a hell of a runner. Uh, he was a hell of a runner. And every time we did the running, I mean, this person was two or three minutes ahead of everybody else on this uh, mile and a half run. You know, everybody's maybe doing 11, 12 minutes. This person's hitting like nine minutes. And I remember one of the instructors saying, you know, that's great, but look behind you. You're not running to codes alone. So do what you can, I guess, to improve yourself. Don't get me wrong, but also remember that you're part of a team. So I remember for me in the academy, stressing the importance of teamwork to me is what definitely set that precedence for what's going to be carried over into the facility. So do you think the academy sets that teamwork mentality first? Yeah. And, you know, that's one of the things that you have to build on in the academy, because, you know, if you show up at your institution and you're just there and you're only fulfilling what your duty is, um, you're a very serious security impediment to the rest of everyone. Uh, you know, we're outmanned and uh, by these inmates, you know, by sometimes, you know, 100 or 200 to one, you're not going to get by having a safe day without teamwork interaction. You're going to have to rely on someone and someone's going to have to rely on you. And if we're not out there doing that, if we're not out there communicating, if we're not out there, uh, you know, seeing what someone else needs in order to make their area safer and vice versa, if we're not coordinating with that inmate movement, if we're just doing what we do to get through our shift, because it's all about the me, 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 and I just want it over and done, then we're placing a lot of people in Jeff jeopardy, not just yourself, not just one other person, but you have the potential in a situation like that to lose the whole damn facility. And that's not what we want. So um, really, you know, you have to, you know, be very, um, you know, mindful of what other people's security needs are with respect to the teamwork that you have to achieve to make everything go in that safe direction. Yeah, I also think that me, 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 or the I kind of pushes people away from you. You know, um, everything in corrections is a teamwork, you know, whether it's a response team or searches or whatever it is. And I know even though we do those reports and, you know, let's say we're doing searches and we and we do find some contraband, whatever it is, yes, in the reports, it's going to be documented who found it. But when the supervisor puts those reports together, it is a team effort. You know, it's going to be showed up as the search team. You know, and it's going to show how we did it together, because, again, maybe you're able to be effective for the search because someone's watching your back while you're doing it. You know, it's, it's never going to be something that you're out there doing alone. And I love what Russ says, too, because also our interaction with each other, knowing that we're a part of our team, you know, because if we are so involved with just what we do on our own, then we're not connected to what the other people are doing. And then, you know, at, at that point here, we're not bringing our work together. You know, I used to have people who they saw, they came in with a competitive attitude right from the academy. Um, and I would like to think that the academy tried to push them away from it, but I think they misinterpreted what the academy's function is. You know, it was how we're supposed to improve as a team, um, which does involve us getting better. Yes, don't get me wrong, but we're supposed to be getting better together collectively. And then what happens is that competitive mentality carries over when they cross into the agency. Now, instead of them sharing information and trying to let, let, let's grow together, they harbor the information because they don't want somebody being better than them. You know, especially when it comes to gang intel. I noticed that a lot of people, when they do gangs, uh, you know, and they start collecting the intel, a lot of them look at it as it's competitive. You know, like we're competing with that 
next person. And it's not. Guys, we need to be sharing this. And I know I even noticed that amongst agencies, police, corrections, or even within corrections, the, the threat suppression teams and the investigators, you know, everybody there is competing uh, as to who can get the information, who's that better gang person, when in the end, guys, it's not about being the better gang person. It's about being the best for the team. What are we doing to move up? And I noticed what happens, that competition mentality winds up leaving a lot of people with no knowledge. They, they, they wind up not, it's not being shared because everybody's afraid that, well, if I give this information to Russ, then Russ has a chance of being better than me. And we don't want that. We want, if I give that information to Russ, then guess what? We can grow together. But do you see that, uh, Russ, that, comp that competitive mentality and, and what happens in the long run? Um, yeah, you know, uh, you bring up a, a really great point there because, you know, when you're doing things with regard to um, intelligence and things like that, um, you know, maybe you're the one that's destined to capitalize on some bit of information, but none of that information is any good if it's not put out there. If, um, you know, I should be sharing the knowledge that I have, the skill sets that I have to make everyone around me better and more ready to deal with things. If that's not happening, if I'm trying to, you know, uh, you know, put myself into a position where it's only me that can capitalize on that information, then someone doesn't have that information can end up behind the eight ball and be put in a position where they can be put in danger. You could miss the chance to make the bust. Um, you could uh, miss the chance to keep, uh, you know, other people safe. And you can't do that. And some people view some of the things that we do um, in a very territorial fashion. Um, I had, uh, we had one at my institution, uh, the guy was just horrible. He was a lieutenant and, uh, you know, he had got to that position in, um, in the gang intelligence unit and he didn't want to share any, anything with anybody. And there were a bunch of us going out of our way to try and, uh, you know, make these gang intel meetings. And he shut all of that down and he created his own little fiefdom. And his own little fiefdom, what he managed to do was is shut that off from so many people that nobody wanted to go forward and help them. Nobody wanted to put them into a position on the yard where they could see what these inmates were doing or make these busts because he was just, you know, completely monopolizing everything, you know. Give us the training, you know, get us that information, help us develop our skill sets and put us in a position where sometimes we'll capitalize on that, sometimes we'll be in the uh, position to exploit that information. And, you know, you know, the spotlight's on me for today. But the main thing is, is we have to have everybody on board because at some point, if people don't get that stuff, then you're fighting amongst each other. And that doesn't do us any good because we have, you know, thousands and thousands of inmates that will capitalize on those mistakes of ours and they will put us in jeopardy. And they will put us in a position where we miss the big plays. Yeah, and I think as a good supervisor, like you may know the strengths of your employees uh, or the people that are directly under you. But you but what you need to do is you need to get them to where they're, they help out the team. I mean, that's the key. Like, so if I have, let's say, someone like Russ, who is great at searching, you know, OK, well, now I'm going to use what Russ has to influence everybody else to build. There. It's not Russ is not going to only be the one doing my searching, you know, it, you don't want to do that. What we have is we have strength with Russ. Yes. But Russ is going to be able to cultivate the team, teach people, you know, because everybody has their own areas of strength in corrections. And, and the cool thing is, is that we could work together to cultivate each other and, and kind of really get a very good team. But when you have supervisors that kind of rely on that one individual and they're not giving other people a chance to grow, that to me becomes a problem too, because then what happens here is you have that spotlight always on that one person. That person always seems to be the one in a position to find something. And you have other people that want to do it, but they're not just, they're not being called up because you know what? I'm just going to use Russ because I know Russ is that person. Well, you know what? Russ may be good at searching, but maybe once in a while, Russ could get involved behind the scenes and help people search by cultivating and getting other people more involved because one day Russ is going to retire and all you're going to have is people who really never got a chance to step up. So 
I think, again, for the supervisors, you want to nurture growth. I get it. And, and you know, really, you know, I got a guy that's good at this. Yes. But I also need to know that I have other people that I also have to try to get involved. So, Russ, I'd love to have you behind the scenes also helping me once in a while. Correct. Would you would you agree it is about cultivating growth? Yeah. And, you know, to really cultivate that growth, if you're the type of leader, you know, that can bring people together and, you know, essentially forge them into a team. You know, uh, one of the great things that you can do is, is, you know, you can parcel out, you know, specific skills for them. Uh, maybe someone's uh, better at searching. Maybe someone's uh, got the inside line on some of the intel going on with the gangs. Maybe someone's an expert on the Mexican mafia. And this other gal over here, she knows a lot more maybe about the Bloods or the Crips. And, you know, give them specific little tasks to do so that they can keep up with the intel, so that they can keep up with, you know, maybe where we're going to conduct a raid, um, things like that. And then bring them all together at once and gel all that stuff together, make it apparent who's in charge of what, but then cross train and move across those boundaries so that everyone gets a little bit of a taste of everything. Maybe someone's going to plan the next mass uh, search that we have to freeze the inmates in place. And, you know, we're going to maybe we're going to have to go in there with some extra sets of handcuffs because we know it's going to be unruly. There's some guys that are going to want to fight us. So get, you know, maybe a couple of the guys that are maybe on one of the tactical teams or something and put them in that charge, but also sprinkle some people in there that are going to get a taste of that, that they can clone themselves and give those skill sets, give that knowledge, give that preparedness over to those individuals. And that's part of starting to build that cohesiveness in that unit, the cohesiveness in the team, so that everybody feels like they have a vested interest in an outcome. And it's those outcomes that really allow that feeling of the teamwork to, you know, just bond together and cement those relationships where people are going to be more enthused about coming to work about their part in the process, about their part in the outcome. Yeah, and, and guys, I mean, we're kind of staying very myopic with just the custody perspective, the correctional officer perspective, but this also involves with us with our interactions with the other departments and letting those other departments know that they're also part of the team. But I really do think that we have to also first get an understanding of how we have to work together ourselves. I mean, I mean, that's the key. That's first and and foremost, and I think right now um, it, it gets lost sometimes. I think there are some individuals who are very career oriented. I know a few who want to be that investigator. They want to move up and they want to be that investigator. And, you know, in their effort to really focus on tomorrow, they wind up just, you know, competing, thinking that everything's a competition. And then they're concerned that, well, uh, everybody wants to be an investigator. Therefore, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to outshine everyone, you know? And then they go in with that mentality and they realize, wow, guess what? You can't do this alone. And all you have done at this point was because you were so looking to shine as opposed to being so much part of the team, you now are on an island. You now are by yourself. And, and it's sad because again, we all want to move up. But moving up really is founded in us helping each other move up. You know, that's the key, supporting each other, you know, transforming each one of us to be the next leader. But, you know, when, unfortunately, you could work for facilities that may not have a lot of opportunities, it happens. And then instead of people wanting to work together to go up the ladder, what happens is we wind up start competing for those positions and the sad thing is, is you may have gotten that next position. Maybe it turns out you were the best, but you disconnected yourself from the people who will further your success when you're in that position. That's the concern. Like when you move up, it's not about competing and pushing the other people down. It's about moving up and elevating everybody up with you. Because in the end, you don't want to be at the top of the mountain on your own because you're going to be unsuccessful. I don't care how successful you were on the front line, as you start moving up, you're, you, you really do start to need people. It is what it is. But if you're considering this competition and you, you think that you can move up alone, you're going to feel very isolated when you get to that one position. And all of a sudden people are like, nope, don't, don't like this guy. 
never liked this guy because this guy the whole time was me, 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 I, I, I. I mean, I, I do see that sometimes, Russ, with people that, and again, I'm not generalizing, just through my experience, people that want to cross into that internal affairs division, um, sometimes I can get a good sense of who they are at the very beginning when they entered his career, because I do sometimes, again, it's not for everyone, uh, I'm not generalizing it out, um, but for, for my interactions, I have seen them kind of just brag about everything that they've discovered and not really, you know, say that it was part of a team effort. It was more, I did this, I did this, I did this. And then as it travels up, you see that same mentality in that next position that they take. You know, it's like, yes, the investigative division discovered this, but, but they don't, they never say the investigative division in partnership with the correctional officers at this facility discovered this. It's It just stays with that same mentality because remember we're talking about other departments the investigative division uh, really has to depend on the front line to get the intel they need but sometimes when they get an outcome that they do want the ones that are giving them the information are isolated from that outcome only very few good investigators go back and say hey let's not forget the correctional officers that were involved in that would you agree with us have you seen that throughout your career yeah, you know, like I like I alluded to before, you know, um, people do tend to, you know, they get that territoriality and and they do want to keep it for themselves. But the thing to think about is, is, you know, how good are you really? Are, are you good enough that uh, that your your sphere of influence, that your span of influence just leaves the instant you walk out those those gates? Or is what you're doing so well done that that influence stays behind even when you leave? Because you've trained other people. You've showed them what to look for. They have confidence in what you've told them, what you've shown them. And so they begin to look for those things. And you've taken your abilities and you've installed them in other people. And they're able to carry it out. Think about how much more influential you are if that's what's going on. Versus the instant you leave, you have no more influence over what's going on inside that institution. It's just it's just gone. And people are glad that you're gone for the day. So um, that's the thing that I always wanted to do. I always wanted to take the things that I knew, the things that I could see, um, the skills that I had and try and, you know, help other people develop those, you know, and, and show them, OK, this is how you go take a cell phone out of an inmate's hand by sneaking up on it. Uh, this is how, you know, you um, identify by body language who might be holding on this yard. This is how you find weapons. And this is why weapons might be in this spot when they've maybe never found any weapons there before. So it's being able to instill those things. And then those people, if they propagate it forward, if you taught them properly, then your influence is not in that first generation, but that second, third, fourth as it goes down, maybe your influence will be there long after you're gone, long after you're retired. Maybe nobody even knows your name anymore, but someone is still, you know, carrying forward the skill sets. Someone's still carrying forth the knowledge. Someone's still carrying forth the idea that teamwork does matter. Yeah. And it's great to see that teamwork be carried up onto the next level. I mean, I, I can kind of sense who were team players uh, when they get moved up because those supervisors wind up becoming, you know, leaders as opposed to the ones that aren't team players that get that cover your ass mentality, not quick to take responsibility for the team and just um, they wind up not getting respect uh, in that position. So, yeah, I definitely think that how you carry yourself at the bottom, you know, promoting that team and being part of a team and not, it's not me, me, me. It's we. It's how do we do this together? Once you start taking that up a notch, higher and higher you go, not only do you have that influence, like you said, Russ, but you have people that are willing to work for you because you, you've been that team player at the bottom and they also want to see you grow. So most likely they're a big part of you moving up. I mean, don't for any minute think, guys, that when you move up, it's because you've done everything on your own. That's not the case, guys, and it will never be the case. And if you go up with that mentality, eventually you'll reach a position where you will fail and you will fall hard. Trust and believe that. 
Because at any time, if you don't recognize the importance of what it is to be a team, then you'll never be a leader. And therefore, the higher up you go, when you really have that high level influence, you'll start seeing that people just won't react to you the way they should. But then when you get that team player and they're up at top, they have these facilities that just they just know how to run. Because in the end, people want to stay connected to that team. And here's what it is. They work as one because even though that person's at the highest level, the front line sees that a failure affects everyone. They don't want that leader to fail because that leader is part of the team. That leader took that team mentality all the way up. But then when you get that person who was an individual, just I, 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 the failure is isolation. I don't care if they fail because it doesn't reflect me because that person could give two shits about us. Hey, Russ, anything you like to say in closing? Yeah, you know, um, this is a great profession. Um, there are going to be times, though, where it's not going to feel good. There's going to be times where, you know, some of the people you're working with, it may seem like a real downer. But, you know, don't carry that with you. Be the one that shines. Be the one that has people that do want to follow them. And then watch out for those people. You know, do the things that you need to do to invest in the qualities that they have to push them forward and to help them up. And all that will ever do for you is cement for yourself um, that spot as a true leader, not someone who's been given some brass and placed it on their collar, but someone that people want to follow. I think you said it best, want to follow. Uh, I love that. Now, guys, if you happen to show Tear Talks for you, brave men and women at Working Correction, so please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. Bell's going to notify you every time I post up a video. Stay safe. Whoa.